Hi, welcome to the presentation about peer feedback. I'm Rosie Ray, and this is a presentation for the Writing Center. People often ask why we make or put an emphasis on peer feedback, but I have to point out that it is important to our ACT values. Our growth mindset includes the ideas that failures are temporary, mistakes are a source of learning, and peer mistakes are an opportunity to show grace so we can improve ourselves and help others on their journey as well, as long as we do it tactfully and correctly. It also speaks to our responsibility. We can proactively work to improve ourselves and our academics. We can improve our relationships with our peers and our colleagues, and we can contribute to the Nightingale community. We're gonna use discussion replies, although these same principles do apply if somebody asks you to maybe put a second pair of eyes on their paper or work together in a study group. The same principles apply. It's just easiest for me to do this presentation using a discussion. So let's pretend that we're in a discussion in Canvas. Our colleague posted, cats are better than dogs. They are better because I like them. Insert fact here. At least a thousand dogs bite people all of the time. Our reading said so. Now this was posted by James. What we need to do is break it down. What is good about the post? What could be improved? Did the learner include materials from the week? Did the learner give credit where due? Who wrote the post? And how can I drive the conversation forward? Now it's our knee-jerk reaction oftentimes to read this post and immediately start looking at all of the things that my peer did incorrectly. But I wouldn't want somebody to do that to me, would I? No, there is good to be found in every post and there is improvement to be found in every post. So when you're looking through a discussion, just an overall tip, read more than the first three, scroll down, scan, see if you enjoy somebody's writing style or they brought up a fact that you hadn't uh, thought about before, okay? So you don't wanna just pick whatever's at the top. So let's read it one more time. The initial post by James are, is cats are better than dogs. They are better because I like them. Insert fact here. At least a thousand dogs bite people all of the time. Our reading said so. So what is good about the post? The very first thing I'm going to point out for all of us is that discussions are difficult for some people to participate in. They're tricky. There may be a fear of exposure, a fear of looking uh, ridiculous, a fear of writing badly. There's lots of anxiety that can come from participating in a discussion post. So I always, always am appreciative of the fact that somebody participated at all. And how could you write a reply if nobody ever wrote a primary post, right? So second, they did make an assertion, cats are better than dogs. That's pretty awesome. And they tried to include some data, thousand dogs biting people all of the time. So those things are good. I also would point out that while there really isn't a citation, our reading said so does indicate that there's an attempt to give credit. So those are all good things about the post. What could be improved? Well, why are cats better than dogs? Yes, they're better because James likes them. But you can see where potentially James cut and paste. I think that the intention was to insert a fact and they just forgot to, to take out the note for themselves or maybe from their template. So that could be improved. Um, where did they get the thousand dogs bite people all the time? And of course, we're gonna talk about the fact this is pretty brief, right? We'd like to, to encourage our colleague here to write more. Going back to my first point, some people have anxiety about this, so we'd like to encourage them. Did the learner include materials from the week? Yes, I'd say so, they're trying. It's our reading said so, and there's a thousand dogs bite. So they did include 
uh, some materials from the week. We can encourage some growth, but they did do it. If they didn't include any materials from the week or any attempt, that may be something else we'd like to address. Did the learner give credit where due? Well, unfortunately, no. You can see the attempt, but it, it didn't happen. Who wrote the post? Now, the reason why I put this down toward the bottom is I have a tendency to go into discussions when I'm a learner and try not to notice who wrote what. Now, you will get used to each other's writing styles. You'll hear each other's voice through their writing, but it's good to try to write back, to reply to people that maybe aren't your friends yet or you've never met yet. It does help us um, maintain a variety in our education. You know, if I and my best friend and uh, maybe I have somebody that's a study buddy and we all three just keep posting back and forth to each other, that's fun, but it shouldn't be all the time. We want to write back to other people. So I tend to put this down toward the bottom of my analysis because I don't look. I don't look till I've gotten this far. And then how can I drive the conversation forward? Not just with James, but with the class. So here's a suggestion. As long as it hits all of the points, this reply should sound like you. So this is one that I wrote, reminding us the initial post, cats are better than dogs. They are better because I like them. Insert fact here, at least a thousand dogs bite people all of the time. Our reading said so. So in my reply, I addressed James. Hi, James. I appreciate your participation in our discussion this week. I enjoy reading my colleagues' posts. I have to agree with your assertion that cats are better than dogs. I have three cats in my family. I'm also glad that you like them. Can you please elaborate on why you like them? Our reading this week went over some pretty astounding facts about cats that may help you make your argument. I did notice the data on how many dogs bite people each year. I'd like to suggest that you include a specific citation for this data. It's always important to give credit where credit is due. What did anyone in our group think about the strange stats on human injuries from cats? Now, is this a perfect reply? No. Is it the only possible reply? Absolutely not. To make it clear, as long as you hit the points, you could say anything you want, right? What you don't want to do, though, is be critical, harsh, or brief. So I'll give you an example. I started positive because it's true. I do appreciate James's participation in the discussion in this week, and I do enjoy reading my colleagues' posts. I also happen to agree that cats are better than dogs. No, maybe I don't, but I could simply say, you know, I don't agree that cats are better than dogs, or I like dogs better than cats, but I really enjoyed your, the point that you made about a thousand dogs biting people. Okay? But in this case, I have three cats in my family. I'm also glad that you like them. Can you please elaborate on why you like them? This is a very polite way of asking them to expand their post. It points out the fact that this is brief and is missing information. I can see that you like cats are better than dogs, but I don't know why. So instead of saying, hey, you forgot your why, this is a nicer way of accomplishing the same thing. Our reading this week went over some pretty astounding facts about cats that may help you make your argument. Again, please expand your post and please refer back to our readings this week. I did notice the data on how many dogs bite people each year. That's a very positive, positive, affirming statement. I'd like to suggest that you include specific citation for this data. Again, very polite way of saying, hey, you might wanna cite this. It's always important to give credit where it's due. That is an explaining sentence that it, it, it shows James that there's a reason why I'm saying that I'm not just you know, picking on something from the initial post. And then to drive the conversation forward, what did anyone in our group think about the strange stats on human injuries from cats? So this may be an alternative. You know, maybe this will get people joining in the conversation about maybe dogs aren't 
you know, are better than cats, or maybe there's a stat in there. So to be very, very clear, the point is to remember to be kind, to remember to be complete, and address the person we're speaking to. A lot of times we see this as an assignment that we're doing for our professor instead of a conversation that we're having with our colleagues. Thanks very much for attending this.